Welcome to Erthig Estate, a treasure tucked away in Wrexham, North Wales. Built in the late 17th century, Erthig House is more than a preserved piece of history. It's a window into the lives of the British aristocracy and their loyal servants over nearly 300 years. From the grand architecture to the tales of dedication between the York family and their servants, this estate is a unique representation of heritage. As we walk through the halls and gardens of Erthig today, we'll dive into stories of resilience, loyalty and tradition. So join me as we explore one of Britain's most extraordinary country estates. Erthig's story begins with Joshua Edisbury, a prominent High Sheriff of Denbyshire in the 1680s. Edisbury embarked on an ambitious project to build a grand country home, a statement of his wealth and position. Designed in the popular Baroque style of the time, the house boasted a symmetrical facade with formal gardens, projecting the grandeur expected of a man of Edisbury's stature. Unfortunately, Edisbury's ambition outpaced his financial means. Burdened with debt, he was forced to sell the property in 1718 to John Meller, a successful lawyer and MP. Meller expanded the estate and filled it with fine furniture, tapestries and art that would later form the basis of the York family's enduring legacy. With John Meller's passing in 1733, Erthig found a new era under the stewardship of his nephew Philip York. The York family would live here for over two centuries, maintaining the house with a unique sense of humility and respect for tradition. Unlike other noble families, the Yorks were not driven by lavish wealth or political ambition. Instead, they became known for their sense of duty and loyalty to their home and staff. The Yorks meticulously documented their own history and preserved artifacts from their daily lives, creating an unbroken chain of family heritage that makes Erthig so compelling today. The family even weathered tough financial times in the 19th century to avoid selling off the house, and in doing so, they preserved an invaluable record of British aristocratic life.
One of Erdig's most remarkable aspects is the enduring relationship between the York family and their servants. From the 18th century onwards, the family began documenting their staff in an unprecedented way. They commissioned portraits and even wrote poems in honor of their servants, a highly unusual practice for the time. In the dining room, you can see portraits of these individuals, each one named and accompanied by a humorous or affectionate verse that captures their personality and role in the household. This wasn't a household where servants were seen and not heard, they were cherished members of the Erdig family. For example, Mary Boswell, a servant who worked at Erdig for decades, was described in poetry as having a busy broom that kept the household in pristine condition. The York's respect for their staff created a unique bond, offering us a rare insight into the lives and contributions of these individuals. Today, Erdig's servant records are considered one of the best documented examples of servant life in the United Kingdom.
Erdig House itself is filled with architectural marvels and beautiful interiors that transport visitors back to the Georgian and Victorian eras. One of the most stunning features is the Chinese wallpaper in the state bedroom, commissioned by the Yorks in the 1770s. This wallpaper is an intricate blend of hand-painted panels depicting scenes from Chinese life, landscapes and birds, a popular trend in high society at the time. The grand staircase with its original oak banisters was crafted with the finest carpentry skills, providing a striking focal point as you enter the home. In the dining room, Georgian furnishings and silverware reflect the restrained elegance of the York family. Unlike some estates where opulence was flaunted, Erdig's rooms feel refined and understated, allowing us to see the true values of the Yorks reflected in their surroundings.
the 20th century brought serious challenges for Erthig. Mining in nearby coal fields caused land subsidence, leading to severe flooding and structural damage to the estate. In 1973, Philip York III made the difficult decision to gift Erthig to the National Trust, hoping they could save the family home from ruin. Restoration began immediately, and the Trust worked tirelessly to repair the structural damage, preserve historical artifacts, and revitalize the gardens. Thanks to these efforts, Erthig was saved and transformed into one of the National Trust's most treasured properties. It now stands as a testament not only to the family who lived there, but also to the people who helped bring it back to life for future generations. Beyond the house, Erthig's walled garden is a jewel in the estate's crown. Established in the early 18th century, it is one of the oldest surviving walled gardens in the UK. Enclosed by high brick walls, the garden was designed to be both practical and beautiful, growing a variety of fruits, vegetables and flowers to sustain the household. Walking through this garden today, you can see varieties of apples and pears grown from trees dating back over 200 years. The Yorks employed skilled gardeners to cultivate these grounds, and even during difficult times they invested in the garden's upkeep. Today, the National Trust continues to care for this space, preserving a tradition of horticulture that feels as vibrant and alive as it was in centuries past. Erthig Estate is a unique slice of history where the stories of the noble and the humble intertwine. From the dedicated York family who cherished this home to the hard-working servants they honored, 
Airvig offers a perspective on the social and cultural heritage of Britain that few other estates can provide. If you've enjoyed this journey through Airvig's halls and gardens, don't forget to subscribe to McBrowser for more explorations of historical wonders. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on the next adventure.